Hi everyone and welcome to another review. Today we've got a new book from Ellie Marks and Ellie is one of my favourite illustrators. I really like her work. It's very unique. Um, she has her own signature style and you can always tell when a piece of work is done by Ellie. And she's created a little Halloween book. So obviously I was straight there, definitely wanted to get it and review it. Um, this is called The Little Colouring Book of Halloween and it is a PDF download. So you would buy this on Etsy and then print it on your preferred paper. So it's not to buy uh, as a, a pre-bound book. So that's actually really good because it means that you can print it on any paper that you like. And it means that whatever materials you've got, you know that's going to work with the paper of your choice. So oftentimes with printed colouring books, you can get really bad quality paper. And sometimes the materials that you have don't play very nicely with them. So I have become more and more um, interested in buying PDFs and printing them off so that I know the paper is good. So that's what I've done here and I've bound it on my binding machine. So let's have a look at the illustrations. Here's the cover. And the first one is it's all quite steampunk orientated. There are obviously a few images that don't have cogs and wheels and things, but there are a lot that do. And this is, I think this is a raven with um, like a key around his neck and he's got the steampunk hat on. We've got lots of things like chains and cogs and machinery, pipes, um, screws and rivets and things like that. And I love, I love all that kind of stuff. And it just means that you can practice your metallic colouring. So we've got this raven sat on top of a rotten pumpkin and inside it looks as though the pumpkin's um, been made up of all this machinery. And again, it's just very unique um, ideas from Ellie. That's what you get all the time with her work. So we've got three really cute puffed up looking owls here and they're just perched on this branch of a pine cone tree. Simple enough image, but I'm sure it'll look fantastic when it's done. And I can just imagine these three being coloured in like jewel tones. So rather than the boring brown, I can imagine them being coloured in purple and orange and all the Halloween colours. So here's a cat with um, a pumpkin necklace or a jack-o'-lantern necklace if you're in America. And um, he also has antlers on. So I don't really know. I think he's just playing dress up, to be honest. Um, he's got a spider web between those antlers and a couple of bats hanging off the end. And we've also got the pumpkins at the bottom. These pumpkins have got really wide spaces in them, which is great for practicing your blending. So if you're somebody who wants to try and colour a pumpkin semi-realistically and get a lot of different tones and things in there because sometimes you can use greens as well as your oranges um this is a really good way of doing it because they've got log, uh, large bits of space for you to practice that on sometimes pumpkins and things can be very small and you don't really have a lot of room in those sections of the pumpkin to do any blending so here we've got a witch with a crystal ball and again loads of pumpkins but what i love most about this is these little ghosts in amongst all of the fallen leaves. I've got a thing about little cute ghosts this year. Um, I just think they're really cute. And there's a lot of merchandise at the moment in the shops featuring these little cute ghosts. So yeah, really love this one. And here's the one that I've coloured. Again, we've got another witch and this is her haunted home. So I decided to go full on Halloween with this, with the colour choices and obviously went for the purple and the orange and the green uh, as the majority of the palette. And I coloured this with Prismas and I think Luminance, but mainly Prismas, and just had a blast doing it, really. Um, it's not the most perfect colouring I've ever done. I can see a lot of white speckles, but this is a very toothy paper that I'm using, so I'll let myself off for that. Um, again, just had a great time colouring it, and it's really bold and vibrant, and that's my colouring style. So, yeah, love it. Then we have more pumpkins and these have got different faces on, really cute. Uh, we've got some corn on the cob and this cat is scratching at this pumpkin, it's not very good. Um, but yeah, just so much fun, so much fun. And here come the steampunk elements back with this owl and he is so majestic, I'm absolutely loving this. So the pumpkin, the face of the pumpkin is actually made up of this, um, it looks like a porthole or something that you would find in a submarine. And then we've got the pipes um, and things going up from the pumpkin almost as if it's a machine that's chugging away and it's it's releasing 
wafts of steam you know steam powered pumpkin is what i'm trying to say um and yeah just love look he's adorned with all these pearls and his clock uh, stop clock stop clock no no pocket watch stop watch <laughs> it's early here and you know what i'm like at the best of times with words um he's got his goggles on and his feathers in his cap and he's looking he's looking mighty so this is really cool because it it's kind of like a gourd looking pumpkin. I think that's what you call them. And this pumpkin is a house and it, it's got um, little pumpkins that add on as lanterns around it and inside it. But you can just imagine some little fairies, some sprites, some elves living in this pumpkin house. So they have made their own abode out of this kind of almost rotting kind of sagging pumpkin and lots of bats, lots of branches and leaves. And then we have a, a kind of a sugar skull, Day of the Dead um, illustration. So this skeleton lady is looking quite Victorian. She's got this rough type thing um, around her neck and an old brooch with the skull and crossbones. She has got a little steampunk influence in her hat here. And uh, I love the veil as well. That would be quite interesting to uh, try and colour that veil, make it look sheer. A cute little mouse bringing her some flowers. We've got another couple of mice here and here is her image depicted on a sticker on this poison bottle and again this is a big large area that you can practice blends on. Now I know that these kind of things like bottles, glass, um, you know reflective surfaces can be quite difficult especially when they are so tiny. So do use this to practice getting that glass effect. I think that will really really help and uh, yeah Fabulous. Love the, how the spiders just create webs between things. We've got another owl here. Maybe this is the previous owl's partner or parent or you, I just like making up stories to connect colouring book images together. Um, but yeah, just very simple. Um, obviously, there's lots of tiny detail on here. If I remember rightly, because I'm a patron um, of Ellie Marks on Patreon, I'm sure she said on there that she put all of these dots in by hand like you could quite easily do them you know with a digital thing you know like a brush that would just make a line of dots but she did them all by hand she's incredibly talented and that's it I thought there was actually another one after that but no so there we, there we go I've bound the book as I said um she also has future ideas for other little colouring books so not you know too many pages just enough for you to do for the season so when they come out obviously I'll review them and I'll probably bind them all in this binding because there's not really enough pages to to make up make up the big bind if you know what I mean um so I will be doing that and um, yeah, so the whole point of this little book series is that um, I think people can get overwhelmed by having a book that has too many pages in. And oftentimes you'll do one or two and then it'll get put away. And I think the purpose of having this little colouring book is to give you just enough pages that make it feel achievable that you'll be able to finish the whole book. And um, yeah, I think that's what she's going for. And also it enables her to create um books more often because she's not doing as much content for each book so that's great it means we've got more work from her coming soon so if you want to buy this i will leave the etsy link in the description and you can go ahead buy it download it print it on your paper and have great fun coloring it so happy halloween everybody and i will see you soon on color with claire <laughs>